Hi, this is Arun from Arun's Yoga.in. I am a software engineer who mostly works with Node.js, PHP and other backend technologies. And I am an open source contributor as well. I am a tantric by birth in a family which is passing tantric wisdom from generations to generations from past 2000 years of legacy and got lucky to travel across India and got chances to study under various gurus from different backgrounds and disciplines. You could connect with me in arunsyoga.in. Here I am helping you to design a divine lifestyle which is based on Vedic astrology, tantra and other yogic system of understanding. Hello all, in today's podcast, we are having a guest. His name is Tom Palladino. He does the scalar energy research and healing through that. So in this particular episode, we are trying to see what he is doing and how it works. So. Welcome to another episode of Arun's Yoga.in, the scalar energy research of Tom Paladino. So today we are having a special guest. He does the spiritual healing, um, not the usual way. He do the scalar energy and the research which is related to that. So, yeah, you can start talking about scalar energy. What is what is that scalar energy? Like, um, you know, uh, we all speak about different kind of energy, spiritual energy, light energy, and things like that. And uh, you are speaking about scalar energy and uh, with the photographs, you can actually increase people's uh, life expectancy people's uh, well-being basically so how does it work um, it's actually a little bit superficial for uh, many people how looking at into a photograph can actually help people to um, develop their own spiritual well-being and their own energy and that could actually leads to healing and things like that so can you explain a bit about the Let's begin with you. Can you talk a bit about you? Why you got interested in the scalar energy as such and what does it mean, basically? Yeah, uh, I work with scalar energy. I have scalar energy instruments. Why did I get involved with this? Well, it has great potential. It's a different type of energy. It's not electricity. Scalar energy is chi or prana or zero point energy. It's a different type of energy. It's very versatile. It can be used in, in so many applications. And I've discovered that it benefits health, the health of people and animals. So I wanted to present my research to the world as to the benefits that can be derived from this, this technology, scalar energy. So with that, I've developed over the years instruments, scalar energy instruments. And those instruments can capture scalar energy, or chi or prana. And we can, uh, we can improve a person's spiritual health in many ways. We can balance the, the seven chakras. And we can balance the brain waves. And we do this by way of this instrumentation. These, these are scalar energy instruments. Uh, once again, we work with photographs of people. I actually take a person's photograph, I'll print out the photograph, and I'll place the photograph inside the instrument. This is my photograph. And when I send energy, scalar energy, into the photograph, it connects to their chakras or it connects to their brain waves. We do all of this, all of the work is by way of photographs, emailed photographs. So we're working with people around the world by way of their aura or their chi or their prana. And the way we make that connection to their spirit is through the photograph. 
It's a new technology. Um, I believe I'm the only one in the world that's practicing this technology right now. So can you explain a bit more about the uh, scalar energy? Like we can actually experience the energy. We all know this is the vibrations of the atoms and stuff like that. Like what is the scientific uh, background which yes. uh, explains the scalar energy? Yeah, there are a few scientists who've developed scalar energy instruments. Hence, we have to rely upon their scientific insight as to this energy. So you can theorize all day long, but you have to have a scalar energy instrument in order to, to have scalar energy practice or the, understand the application of this energy. There have been scientists such as Nick Tessa and Galen Hieronymus who develop scalar energy instruments. And with that, they have a background. They, by way of experience, they can relate as to the nature of scalar energy. The, the scientists, myself included, have this experience, this hands-on experience in which we can, we, we can uh, uh, confer that we have develop a new approach to energy control, energy placement. And with this technology, with these instruments, we have now ventured into a new branch of physics. Okay, And that's what we're speaking of. It's an entirely new field of study. It's a new discipline, scalar energy. Presently, it's not accepted by academia. It's only been established by a few scientists. I'm one of those few scientists. So it's new. It's, it's groundbreaking. And much research needs to be done to develop this technology. Can you define scalar energy? Give a definition for the scalar energy. <clears throat> I believe it's the, the light of God. Scalar energy does not behave like electricity. Scalar energy is an internal energy. It never experiences entropy. It never weakens over, uh, over uh, time or, or distance. So scalar energy is the light of God. It's a divine energy. You're speaking about the instruments. Those can accelerate the uh, particular existence of the godly or the divine energy. Um, what sort of the instruments those are and what it exactly does? Yeah, they are custom built instruments. In many ways, I've modeled the instruments after my predecessor. His name is Galen Hieronymus. And with these instruments, we again, we can control this dimension, scalar energy, the chi or prana. So on account of the fact that they're custom built instruments, this is this has never been done before, with the exception of my predecessor, Galen Hieronymus. We're the only ones that have this type of instrumentation. So with that said, our results are quite stellar, but uh, we, we cannot compare our results to anybody else. It's, we're the only ones in the world that have ever ventured along this path. What does it, it exactly does? Like, uh, what does it exactly do? Like, do you have a scalar energy instrument with you right now? Yeah, I, I, I do. It's in my laboratory. They're just, they're too big. I can't move them around. They're not portable instruments. So some of the functions that I've discovered with scalar energy, it controls molecules. It can either bring or assemble a molecule or break apart or disassemble a molecule. So these instruments allow us to control molecular forms. Imagine that we can control molecular forms. And in so doing, we have incredible control over, over matter. So for instance, if I wanted to create a hormone or an antioxidant, I could actually assemble, create a hormone or an antioxidant with these instruments. Or if there was a toxin, say, say a, a, a chemical, a pollutant, or a microbe, such as a fungus or a parasite, we could break it apart with this energy, with this technology. So the point is, 
with scalar energy, we have control over molecular form. We have mastery over molecular form. That's very important. If we have mastery over, over molecular form, then that leads us to, into a new chapter in which we can control the physical universe. That's very important. Now we have mastery over physical form. Can you explain a little bit more how does the instruments work? Like uh, we know the instruments, those are working with the physical energy. It's like uh, for instruments, there are cathode, anode, and the electrons will pass from one place to another. How does this work uh, yeah. like scalar energy theoretically? Oh, sure, sure. So to, to walk through this process, if I have a photograph of a person, this is my photograph, I could send energy or instructions, scalar energy instructions into the force field, into the spirit. And in so doing, I could, by way of this photograph, I could create nutrients, again, such as hormones or antioxidants or vitamins and minerals through the medium of the photograph. Now, keep in mind, I never work with people or animals. I only work with photographs. So this is the new science in which you're accessing a force field or the aura or the spirit. I don't work with physical, biological life. I work with force fields. Everything is non-physical. So by sending energy or instructions into a photograph, the photograph receives those instructions. The photograph is able to assemble a vitamin, a mineral, hormones, or antioxidants. And then there's another process in which we can detect on the photograph, we can detect, say, a bacterium or a fungus or a parasite, and we can break apart the bacterium or the fungus by way of this energy field on the photograph. So what am I saying? The photograph is a mirror-like image of a person. I never work with people I only work with the copy of a person, which is their photographic force field. It's an entirely new, it's a new beckoning science. It's an entirely new approach to reality in which you don't work in an electromagnetic spectrum. You work in a scalar energy spectrum. There's two spectrums, there's two dimensions. And a photographic dimension can be accessed by way of a scalar energy instrument. I don't think electromagnetic uh, instruments can access the aura, or if you will, the chi, the prana, the scalar energy on a photograph. You need a scalar energy instrument to access the scalar energy information on a photograph. This is what's so peculiar about the work of Dr. Hieronymus and my work. We've always been able to access the scalar energy information on a photograph only with the scalar energy instrument. So this is, a, once again, a new and emerging science, and it takes a different viewpoint. What people have learned in, by way of academia regarding electromagnetic energy is true. That is valid. But this is a new science that, that demands a new interpretation of reality. This this is a new physics textbook, so to speak. So the laws of electricity are not the laws of scalar energy. So we have to develop a new understanding of this new science. And then and only then can we understand in application how this works. Um, <clears throat> you all already said that there are some instruments are being developed or uh, you've been into contact with so how does it exactly work? What kind of parts those machines has? Uh, they're rather sophisticated instruments. Um, the best way I could describe it, um, I, I am able to harness scalar energy in a vacuum tube. And that vacuum tube is a reservoir or, or creates that scalar energy environment. It's, it's been trans, transduced within that vacuum tube. And then therefrom, I can send that energy out into Tesla coils and the Tesla coils magnify that energy. So the instrument is able to capture and harness scalar energy. The vacuum tube is a key component. You can't work with solid state circuitry. You need a vacuum tube 
that introduces an environment, a, a, like a 3D environment, not with uh, solid state circuitry. And in so doing, once you have that environment that you've created in the vacuum tube, then it's, it's quite different. Then, then you could send scalar energy anywhere in the world by way of a person's photograph. Now, keep in mind, electricity is limited to one point. Scalar energy is the omnipresence of God. There is no limitation to scalar energy. Once you're working in that paradigm, the scalar energy paradigm, you can, you can access the energy instantaneously anywhere in the universe. So this is an instantaneous divine action. It's quite different than that of electricity. So what does this vacuum tubes actually house? Like, is that filled with uh, any kind of gases or is there any kind of- uh, No, it's, it's, a, it's essentially inert. But what, what it does do, it introduces the double helix, which is the scalar wave. So you have to, in this world, which is predominantly an electromagnetic environment, you have to be able to overcome electricity and magnetism and create a scalar wave, a standing scalar wave. So what does my instrument do? It creates a standing scalar wave. It perpetuates scalar energy, in which scalar energy will not break down, it will, it will not degrade into electricity and magnetism. So through this process that Dr. Hieronymus has developed and that I've been able to perfect over the years, I have an instrument that can sustain a standing wave, a scalar energy standing wave. That, that's the key. The, the instrumentation and the control of the energy, that's the key. What is the unit of scalar energy? It's a good point. There is no unit. You see, in an electromagnetic environment, you have a finite unit, such as a, a, a kilometer or a mile. To measure distance, or if you're you're measuring a, a fluid, it, it could be a gallon or a liter. But with scalar energy, it's omnipresent; it's everywhere. So there is no fundamental unit. Scalar energy is, is an infinite dimension. Scalar energy is the omnipresence of God. So there is no unit. So frankly, I don't believe it can be measured because in order to measure something, it has to be finite. You cannot measure the infinite. So I can, I can ascertain the before and after results with my energy. I've never been able to measure it. I don't think you can measure something that's infinite. Why do we need an instrument to measure, to work with something which is infinite? Yeah. Everybody has the ability to call upon scalar energy through your mind, your thoughts, or through your, your heart, your prayer, your emotions. So the human mind and the, the human heart are great examples of scalar energy vessels. They're instruments of scalar energy. And I've always encouraged people to think well, okay, and, and to be of good heart, be of good cheer, have a virtuous life. Those characteristics, our thinking and, and our, our thoughts and our emotions, that is all part of the scalar energy paradigm. So everybody in the world has access to scalar energy. In particular, I have the ability to control and to refine that energy through instrumentation. That should not be a drawback to anybody using their mind and their heart appropriately. You've been mentioning some scientists, um, those who've been worked with the scalar energy. So what is their work and who are they? Yeah. I believe the first scientist to control scalar energy was Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla, a great scientist. He developed scalar energy instruments and he saw the merit of this energy and I think Frankly, I think he became enamored of this energy um, and he more or less abandoned his electrical engineering career. He wanted to work almost exclusively with scalar energy. Well, the, with that said, there was a few other scientists. 
Galen Hieronymus that I've studied under. There's a, an American inventor, Thomas Moray, a few other scientists. But very few scientists have able to be able to control this energy through instrumentation. The key to this science in practice, practical application is instrumentation. You have to have an instrument to control scalar energy and to produce what I would consider dependable, re reproducible results. So in order to develop the science to that, to that extent, you need a great deal of research and a great deal of, of insight from God to create instruments, to create scalar energy instruments. So what was their work basically? Is there any scientific papers or any instruments they have developed? Tesla had left the world many scientific papers and, and you could read some of his scientific papers. At Hieronymus, it's, it's limited because uh, for the most part, he was not published. But there are no instruments left. Tesla's instruments were seized by the United States government. And Hieronymus, um, his work fell into obscurity. And Hieronymus, his instruments are not to be found anymore. So the point being is, in many ways, we have to start over, or we have to look at these two great scientists and then re reintroduce, once again, we have to recreate their work, which is a shame. So none of the instruments from them is been founded. No, no. They're gone, gone, lost, lost uh, forever, perhaps. Um, and it's a shame that, that people did not see the merit of these two great scientists and work with them to a greater capacity. So, you know, it's, it's a lesson to be learned. When God gives a gift, you, you realize that gift. You don't spurn that gift. Then, ooh. How, what basis did, did you start to develop the instruments that you say is that you have? Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it was really under God's impulse that I uh, pursued this career of research. It, it's been a lifetime of research. Um, I, I'm glad I did it, but it, it's been work. It's been a tremendous amount of work. And the point I'm trying to make is that this this type of research, um, you have to have this focus. And I believe I've had that focus. It's, it's all consuming. And I might add that much of my research is groundbreaking. So every discovery is, is of merit, but it takes time. It's painstaking. So you already said Ki, that you have built some instruments or you are having the instruments. Do you have any pictures of your instruments? Yeah, yeah. on my website, you can find my, my uh, instruments, scalarlight.com, and I show the instruments on the website. So how does it work? Like you need to put electricity on that? Or... Yeah, well, when I work with these instruments, some of them are passive and some of them need uh, an electrical current to, to start the process in which electricity is, is converted into scalar. And I will note with that, that you can convert electricity into scalar or scalar back into electricity. So we, we see that really it's a bi-directional conversion with these two energies. And notably, I, I've always thought that the stars create scalar energy initially and scalar energy will invariably break down into electromagnetic energy in many environments. And I've demonstrated that in my laboratory, which I can take electricity converted into scalar. And in many ways, that scalar will once again break down into electromagnetic energy. So this is the, 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 the observation that I make. And I think I, think I'm, I will be proved to be right once uh, other scientists have discovered or rediscovered what I have. So, for example, you've been already speaking about the infinite. <clears throat> the scalar energy is actually infinite. And uh, what we are having, the electricity is actually finite. So, how, what is that making you to think that 
finite energy could be converted into infinite? Yes, yeah, good point. If you if you take a, a star, all energy begins with this infinite energy scale of energy, and it will maintain itself in certain conditions under certain certain circumstances. But if scalar energy degrades, it will degrade and experience entropy. And once scalar energy degrades into electricity, entropy enters into the equation, so to speak, which is the breakdown of, of the, the field, the breakdown of the signal. So you, you can always have perfect energy <clears throat> provided you remain in a scalar wave which is infinite energy, which does not experience any breakdown or entropy. So that's the key to keep this energy, all energy in a scalar form. As soon as it breaks down or converts into electromagnetic energy, it, it, entropy enters into the, into the equation. And that's a finite concept. What was that last part I didn't hear you? And what, once, once scalar energy degrades into electricity, <clears throat> electri electricity is a, a finite consideration. It's a finite energy. And with that, entropy is the, drives that finite capacity. If electricity were infinite, then it would never experience entropy. What is that entropy means? like? Entropy is the loss of signal, the, the, the degradation, the loss of the signal. It's, it's, the, it's the demise of a paradigm, the, the weakening of a paradigm. And that's what we see with electricity. It always weakens. The, the, the model always breaks down. It degrades. It corrodes. It, it loses energy. So my question is, how do you convert the electricity back to scalar energy? Uh, if, if you look at <clears throat> electricity in magnetism, it, it travels, if you will, in a, in a perpendicular fashion, okay? And what you need to do if this is electricity and, and magnetism is working in a perpendicular fashion along an axis, you need to correct that and harmonize so that they both join together and, and form a scalar wave. So a scalar wave is a double helix. I'm wrapping my two hands like a double helix. And when that double helix breaks down, it becomes electricity and magnetism, uh, moving in a, in a perpendicular fashion. So that, to me, that's in a topological sense. That's the key to, to, to understanding a standing wave. You cannot break down the standing wave. It must remain as a double helix. Any equations related to scalar energy? Yeah, I'm sorry? Any equations related to scalar energy? Uh, I, I don't think there's any drawback to scalar energy. I don't think there's any- uh, Any uh, equations? No, no, not that I've seen any, any equations. Why? You cannot, you cannot equate infinity. I don't think anybody's ever measured scalar energy. How, how could you uh, write an equation for infinity? I mean, you could, but it would have, the equation would have to describe an infinite concept on, on both ends, so to speak. So uh, I've, I've mused that thought quite frequently. I don't know of any scientific equation that can prove scalar energy. And if it did, then you would have to have an equation that, that defined in infinity. No, you are speaking about the instruments. That is the part which I'm wondering, like mm -hmm. there's something which you can't make an equation out of. You may not be able to build an instrument out of the same. How does right. it uh, synchronize? Right, how does it synchronize? Well, that's a good point. You have to look at, at the certain geometry that this, these instruments are built with. And what am I getting at? This geometry is a copy of the universe. So my instruments essentially are a miniature star. So when I set out to reproduce the work of Dr. Hieronymus, I realized that ratio proportion, the geometry is so important because the ratio and proportion that I'm working with is identical to the ratio and proportion of the universe, <clears throat> which is, it is the phi ratio. It's the phi principle. 
And that's the key. You, you copy nature. That's what I'm doing. I'm copying nature. The instrumentation itself, the actual schematics, that's another matter that I really don't want to get into. That's a guarded uh, technology. That's a guarded secret. But for the sake of this conversation, I copy nature. So um, if, do you have any photographs over here in your computer uh, which people could see? You can share the screen. Uh, let's yeah, yeah, I'm gonna try and share a screen. It's disabled. Can you can you share that with me? On your end, I try to share a screen, but um, it's uh, disabled from screen sharing. So I don't know if we'll be able to overcome that. If not, the best way to do that is to visit the website, scalarlight.com. I, I have uh, given you the access. Now you can share this. Okay. Let's see if we can do this. Let's see if we can do this. That's one of the instruments that I work with. Can you make it? These are the custom built instruments. Um, can you make it a little bit uh, bigger? Like that's that's all I will go on my end. Can you see it? Um, no, it's like thumbnails. It is like really you can't see it. Shoot. Yeah, that's as that's as big as it will go on my end. Sorry. Um, okay, so that. That's the so scalar see, light instrument. Uh, one that, thing, one second. Like, if uh, somebody is listening to this particular podcast, if even if they are blind or something, like, can you explain the instrument that you can see in your screen? Okay. All right. You, you'll see in the top right hand corner is a vacuum tube. That vacuum tube is, is essentially where we've we've been able to create the standing scalar wave. Within that vacuum tube, that, that environment is a scalar energy environment. And it, it is to the point that there's very little or any electricity or magnetism in that vacuum tube. So that vacuum tube is, if you will, is a reservoir, if you will, of scalar energy. Then we move on to the left, there's, going to the center of the photograph. Okay. And we see that capacitor, which, which is another means of, of harnessing scalar energy and preparing it to be distributed or sent through those series of wires to the broadcast Tesla coil. That's the transmitter Tesla coil on the top left. So the key again to all of this is the ability for a scalar energy instrument to sustain, to create and sustain a scalar wave. And this is what we've been able to achieve with the work of Dr. Hieronymus and our current work. It's, it's so important to realize that when we're not working with electricity, that this is a new branch of physics. And this new branch of physics will Will, will one day be embraced as, as indeed a, a, a new approach to reality. It's a different dimension. Can you explain a bit more like what is this is actually made of that? Uh, what kind of metal you've been used to build this particular um, yeah. chamber? Usually when I, when I work with this instrumentation, it's usually copper. Copper proves to be a very, um, a durable metal, a metal that seems to be very friendly to scalar energy. Um, if you look at the, the uh, Tesla coil on the top left, that's the broadcast Tesla coil, that's the transmitter. And you can see the base is made out of copper. And through experimentation, and, and Dr. Hieronymus has, has discovered this, and, and our engineering team has likewise concurred that copper is a great, if you will, repository, or, or if you will, a great material to work with scalar energy. It, it works hand in hand with scalar energy 
um, allowing the, the standing scalar wave to continue to, to uh, perpetuate, if you will. Um, so much of that instrumentation is either a copper or, or, um, or perhaps an alloy of copper. Um, you can see that the wiring that we're using is copper wiring. I'll note that the wires never overlap because once a wire will overlap, touch one another, then the force fields start to share. So unlike an electrical current where one wire can touch another wire, when you're working with a scalar wire, the wires have to remain separated. Otherwise, the two wires will start um, to share scalar energy. We don't want to do that. This, the, a scalar energy instrument should always have its wires separated. Why, what is the role of Tesla coil here? The point of the Tesla coils is to magnify the signal. In other words, the, the instrument that you see right in front of you, the, the oscillator sets up the, the standing wave, so to speak. But once, once we've um, established a standing scalar wave, then we send it to the Tesla coils to magnify, to amplify, and to broadcast the, the scalar wave. So the Tesla coils really are the, the amplifier. That's, it's important to realize you still need to amplify this energy. Um, and that's the point of the, the uh, transmitter and the receiver uh, Tesla coils. So if someone has sent you a photograph from other part of the world, for example, you are, in, uh, you are from US and I am from India. And if I'm sending you one of my photograph, assume that, and uh, how does it can transmit the energy to the place which I'm living? Because I am in the other part of the exactly opposite part of where you live. Yeah, yeah. So there's another scalar energy instrument that's not, that's, that's not in this photograph. And I would actually place photographs of people in that other scalar energy instrument. And that scalar energy instrument is, if you will, a, 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 a depository, if you will, of photographs. Allowing those photographs to be bathed or those photographs to enjoy the scalar energy, the ambient scalar energy environment. So the other instrument that's not detailed is a scale, likewise a scalar energy instrument that we can set, we can actually place photographs inside that instrument. Now, putting all of this together, the, the uh, other scalar energy instrument that holds, if you will, the photographs of people likewise enjoys a scalar energy environment, a certain calibration on that instrument, then we can pinpoint the person or we can send instructions to the persons by way of that other scalar energy instrument. So the photograph you're looking at, I call that the arc, the arc of the covenant. And the other instrument allows me to introduce information as well as photographs of people. And in that other scalar energy instrument, it not only holds, it's, it's a, uh, if you will, a depository for photographs, but it's also uh, uh, the place where we can instruct the energy. The instructions are sent through that other instrument. So how many use cases like I'm sorry. How many use cases? Uh, uh, on, a, on a daily basis now, presently, I'm working with probably 150, 200,000 people a day. So the, the instruments are able to work with millions of photographs a day. So what I envision is, is the world to get behind us and to work with us on a on a regular basis so that we can provide healing to people by way of their photograph. And if the instruments work with millions of people at a time, well then, then with that in mind, we can, we can work with anybody around the world, it doesn't matter where their location, and we can provide healing by way of scalar energy through their photograph. You're saying that the uh, scalar energy is the infinite source of energy. 
so why somebody need to place their photographs inside this particular machine uh, in order to get uh, healed or transformed or whatsoever yeah yeah everybody has the gift of, of healing the, the scalar energy is everywhere in the world again it's sunlight or starlight it, per, it pervades everything it pervades the universe my instruments allow me to have a specific control over scale energy. And this is what people don't necessarily have. I have instruments that can control the energy. And I can, if you will, I can manipulate matter with these instruments. And that's, that's the key to my research, the ability to control matter, to manipulate matter to our benefit. So, anything else you want to talk here? No, no, I, I appreciate your, your questions. I appreciate the, the audience listening to my description of this new and emerging science. Uh, I'll mention this to the audience. Uh, visit our website. It's scalarlight.com. Anybody in the world can visit that website and you'll send us your photograph. We will um, uh, provide 15 days of free sessions by way of a photograph. So send us, email us your photograph and we provide 15 days of free sessions. So um, people can contact you in um, scalarlight.com, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you for joining us and uh, have a good day. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to my podcast. You could connect with me in arunsyoga.in where you could see my contact details including my phone number, my WhatsApp and email ID. Stay tuned for more exciting episodes.